Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by someone that has not been on this channel for a very long time. Of course, I'm talking about my good friend, Jack Edwards. How's it going, buddy? Doing great. Doing great, Casey. Good to be back on. How you doing, my friend? I am doing well. So for people that do not know, kind of remind uh, everybody who you are and what you do. Yeah, my name is Jack Edwards. Um, I'm now a senior about to graduate here at Indiana University up in, uh, in Bloomington, Indiana, um, majoring in uh, broadcast and sports journalism, got minors in marketing in Spanish. Um, I've been doing stuff um, in broadcasting and reporting on Indiana athletics for the last four years, kind of interrupt, interrupted by COVID during my freshman year, but yeah. um, for a variety of student media outlets here at IU, um, the Hoosier Network, WIUX, our student radio station, IUS TV Sports, um, and BTN Student U TV Productions. Um, my most recent and last broadcast was this past Saturday. Um, I called the 2023 20, men's little 500 race. Um, I almost said Indy 500. We were talking about IndyCar before we got on here, Casey, but uh, yeah. the, the, the bike version um, yes. model after the Indy 500. Um, that was a great experience that for a second time, but um, that was my 71st live broadcast at Indiana for four years, my last one. Um, awesome. So that, it's been a, a great experience there. Um, and I'm kind of in the the dwindling last stages of being a college student before I get under the, the real scary professional world. Yeah. Yeah. If you want Indy car content, uh, there's another, there's another someone that went to Indiana that comes on here. Yep. By the way, he'll be on here on Thursday. Colin Culpa will be on to do the, uh, the Indy car preview for Barber. So uh, down in Alabama. So it's going to be, uh, that's going to be fun there. A little bit of a teaser here on this, uh, on this podcast. Um, so how did you first get into broadcasting? I don't think I've ever asked you this uh, for how many years I've known you. Um, so I, so kind of to tell you about how I got to broadcast, it's kind of my life story a little bit. So I, I lived in, um, born suburbs of Chicago, lived there till I was eight, um, moved to Dallas, Texas when I was eight, um, lived there till I was 14. So moved the summer before my freshman year of, co- of high school, um, when, when I was 14 years old. And so I, was originally in Texas going to go to a, a pre-international baccalaureate, however you pronounce it, pre-IB school. Yeah. Um, and I was really going to, I loved the idea of communication and I wanted to take Mandarin and Spanish classes and learn how to speak English, Spanish, and Mandarin. And I think it was a stat that I saw around that time when if you can speak those, those three languages fluently, you can speak to 80% of the world, which I thought was a really cool thing that I could go in four fifths of the world and just be dropped in and communicate with somebody. That was a cool idea to me. Um, so I wanted to do that, but you know, moving from Texas. And so I moved to Carmel, Indiana with my family, we were going to Carmel high school. It was about a month before classes started and I was taking me some, in some electives. Um, and I was like, I want to take Mandarin and Spanish. And they were like, all right, little nerd boy let's like don't do that like don't get bullied like so the the counselor and very more nice i was like why don't you look at some other stuff i was also interested in in broadcasting and reporting and stuff like that i always thought like the idea of um sports center was like a very compelling thing but um i uh ended up taking tv and radio intro to tv and radio at carmel high school and so i had been interested and i kind of got in my foot in the door and they have i think i don't know what you, how you compare high school TV or radio programs across the country, but I would put WHJ and CHTV up with any other place in the country. They are phenomenal in terms of the resources and faculty and support that you have there. Okay. Um, and so I was able to start broadcasting stuff my sophomore year. I don't know if it was my exact first broadcast, but I remember being a, a color commentator on a TV broadcast of a women's um, or a girls basketball game is what we called them. Um, we used to women's basketball yeah, game, yeah. But, a, but a girls basketball game at Carmel. And probably was not fun to listen to, struggled halfway between my freshman and sophomore year, uh, or in between my freshman and sophomore year, my voice dropped completely. And so I went from having like, I was a tenor in middle school choir, and my voice just dropped to not where it is right now, but immensely. Um, And then I kind of, you know, realized pretty soon after that, pretty soon after that, that I was blessed with some very nice pipes. And then that kind of, you know, maybe my field, my future is in speaking um and so i kind of got more involved into it ended up going to iu and it kind of was just a snowball process of continuing to get experience continuing to love it um there's like a dopamine rush you get after a broadcast and during a broadcast when um you you just had a very big high afterwards that you love to capitalize on and so i um i I kind of fell in love with it 
been sticking with it and it's been a great experience now eight years i guess which i feel like i'm i'm 21 maybe 22 um in july but so i'm really young like i'm, I'm still a really young guy but i've got a lot of experience um that i think has really been beneficial like i, I generally could I argue i've got eight years of tv and radio experience which you know i mean it was like when i was 14 till i was now so i um i really kind of fall in love with it and it's i didn't ever like expect to be a play-by-play -play professional as like a job i don't know if i ever expected that to happen because it's kind of a crazy thing to like pay the bills with um but i mean i'm i'm gonna pay some of the bills with it, it it's a field that you know you walk into it and you know it's not going to be the most financially secure in most positions because it's just such a an interesting and, and highly sought after position um but i'm i'm ready to chase that that passion and it's been a it's been a great journey um chaotic weird but it's been phenomenal so far yeah so long time watchers of this channel will know when jack's been on here um i think we know um you have a passion for a lot of people know that like in broadcasting everybody knows he has a passion for obviously you know mine is obviously with you know with high, different high school sports and obviously i did college for a while and then obviously you know with the racing stuff that i do um obviously you've uh been a good resource every anytime i need to know anything about soccer um you're the guy i go to mm -hmm. uh, what, what um oh, your passion for soccer you're a huge liverpool fan um so what kind of drew you to broadcasting soccer Kind of like uh, very similar to how I became into broadcasting or kind of just like it was a slow burn. And then I was kind of like, oh, maybe I kind of like this. And I was kind of just surrounded by it for a long time. And it kind of just grew on me. Um, my dad became a huge Liverpool fan after the 2005 um, Champions League final um, yeah. when Liverpool came back from three goals down against AC Milan, which I was watching back the highlights the other day just because, you know, it's a tremendous, tremendous match, tremendous, you know, monumental sports moment unbelievable AC Milan team a Liverpool team that's got some decent players but it's mainly just kind of Steven Gerrard Xabi Alonso Jamie Carragher and accessory pieces that like just aren't that great versus Milan is just littered with these world-class players um and they come back it's this dramatic incredibly emotional thing my dad becomes a fan after that he's just got games on and I'm a young kid. I wake up early in the morning and my dad's up early in the morning watching these matches. I just kind of started watching it and ingraining it in my brain. And um, first year that I really remember fully being invested in my first heartbreak in sports was the 2013-14 title race for Liverpool where they ended up falling short to Manchester City. Um, but I was, you know, 12, 13 years old when that, when that was happening. And so I kind of remember that being a big formative thing. It wasn't the kind of, with Liverpool... The thing where I could go to games, obviously, because it's across the ocean. Um, and so I would kind of just watch the matches get up early in the morning. It was a different kind of fandom. Um, and I just I, I love the sport. You know, I I think I don't dislike basketball or um or football or baseball, but I always make fun of my friends who are really passionate about those sports because I'm like, think about how arbitrary some of them are. Like for football, you, you have two guys, sets of eleven guys line up on the other side of a line. Yeah push at each other for three seconds until the play stops and they get ready to do it again. In baseball, you're running an exact straight line to point to point to try and make a crap pass to four points oh, yeah. to get a point and then try and more points in your opponent after the end of 27 interactions, 27 outs. Um, at basketball, like you got a net. There's all like, there's kind of a lot of stop, chop and change kind of stuff versus in soccer. It's just fluid. It's, massively open it's impossible to try and define a lot of things that happen on a pitch because it's so expansive it's so kind of just um artful to watch um so i enjoyed liverpool a lot as a specific team but i really became to love the sport um and it it wasn't ever my intention like to pick a niche to really like yeah. but it really helps to stand out because if every everybody loves basketball everyone loves football everyone loves baseball and i like those sports too but if I wanted to try and stand out and be a broadcaster, be a producer, be a reporter in one of those fields, I'm going up against almost every other one of my colleagues and every other colleague that could be at another school, wherever. Versus with soccer, it's got a, a knowledge bridge and an interest bridge where it's growing massively. But it's it's a niche that I realized probably about 
three, four years ago that I'm really into this. I could definitely attack it. So I covered the Indiana men's soccer team for three years. Um, it's gotten really close to that program. Um, the people in it just kind of getting a lot of connections there. Um, I've been doing stuff with, you know, youth local stuff. I've done stuff with a YouTube channel over in Liverpool doing content about Liverpool football club. So I've expanded my brand as a soccer reporter and it, there's always that risk of turning your passion or your hobby into your job. Um, but I don't think it's going to have an issue there where I'm going to be able to take my passion into a sport that's growing in America and really apply it there. I'm really excited about that. Yeah. So you're going to be graduating. Mm -hmm. um, can you believe that this is this, this moment is finally here? I, I can see you grinning and all that. Yeah, no, it's um, I feel ready. Definitely. I feel like it was a long four years. It does. I've been saying this to people like yeah. when I was younger, when I was in the beginning of college or even the beginning of high school, you know, I'd be told like it flies by, like it, it goes right like that. Like you, you, won't, you wouldn't believe it. And I was like, you know what? Like, goofy old person of course you're gonna say that just because you're old yeah. um but it really does like it it, it was a, a lot has happened for me in the last four years but i'm i think i'm definitely a spot where i'm not cooped up or antsy but i'm like you know what the the next development for me is it's, it's gonna be somewhere else i'm ready to go somewhere else and experience the real world i feel like i've absolutely maxed out my college experience um, I'm obviously gonna be very sad that this community of people won't really ever be together again um, after about two weeks. Uh, I'm naturally very sad about that, but I think that you you have to, I mean, we all signed up for this for four years. We knew what we were doing, we, we were getting into, and it was gonna end someday. Um, and so I think that I never was worried about the end date. And I think that I, I'm, I'm just ready to, to end it on a strong note not kind of on a on a downturn but on a on a very high spot so i i think i'm there is a, a few moments where i was like it'll hit me when i'm just breaking down the weeks and i'm like well this is dead week you know there's not much happening and, and the next week's finals week and it's graduation and then i'm moving and so it's like how quick things are going to happen in the next 15 20 days is gonna it's kind of crazy to think about like that so try i try not to think about that um but it, it, it is um, exciting times for sure. So you talk about graduating. What are you going to feel on that day? Do you know yet? Um, I, we, have two, we have two graduations. We have a media school commencement on Friday. We have our general graduation on Saturday. Um, uh, for graduation, like the actual day, like the, the general school one, I, it'll be it'll be the second day like it'll be sat, that's the saturday commencement's the friday um the commencement i'm definitely gonna be more i think moved and emotional because it'll be just media school people it'll be just people that i i'll know like a good chunk of them i think we'll have probably like i don't know how many are going to graduate i would guess like 800 to a thousand i think from the media school maybe i think they have like five different graduations that they yeah. have or yeah so the, the, just the media school only one is going to be just the media school students who are graduating so I was gonna be a lot smaller. I'm gonna walk across the stage fully for that one versus I'm not gonna do that obviously for graduation. Um, like the, the proper school one. So that one will be more emotional because I'll, I'll look through the list of people or hear the list of names and it'll be tough to have too many go by without somebody that I know that I've been very close with over the last few years. That one is gonna be quite um, fun because we'll be able to kind of cap off, you know, just kind of celebrate those last moments. Um, the graduation on the the Saturday, I think, what would be um, not less emotional, but my family will be my entire family is coming up for that one because they can get into um, Memorial Stadium for that. Um, that's just going to be a nice like moment with my family to like just end my college career. Like, it's a big celebration. It's a it's a it's a massive milestone, and I think it's going to. I I don't think I'll be terribly sad. I think I'm just going to be very proud of of what um, I've accomplish over these last four years and then I'll leave with a degree and I'll leave as a college graduate which is you know something that I I've been very blessed come from a very good background and it's something that's kind of like you know just kind of expected almost in, in my family where I've been brought up but it is a big accomplishment to graduate from college you know I made a big commitment and I accomplished it and so I think it's going to be I've been focused really heavily on the just excitement and happiness that that it'll bring everybody for me to kind of have this last hurrah as I get like a little 
thing that says, I spent a lot of money to go here and I got this little piece of paper. So I'm excited to get that piece of paper. I mean, I have it. It's uh, it's downstairs hanging in, uh, hanging my, uh, my, in the, my kind of like place. Sure. So it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. Um, but describe these past four years. Cause it's like, um, you know, a ton of broadcast, a lot of experience. Oh yeah. And you had to go through a pandemic too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Freshman year was crazy because yeah. you know, there was no concept of pandemic, a concept of how the world could change. So we had about first semester and the first two, three months of second semester of my freshman year, completely normal. Um, and just like your normal college problems, you know, like you, you've just got, you know, your little dramas that you have and you're just trying to figure out who you are as a person and meeting new people. And, um, I changed a lot my freshman year. I, I met a lot of people, became a lot more outgoing, um, just seeing the, people from diverse backgrounds, which is so helpful that people from all across the country that I became friends with. Um, and then come, you know, COVID, it really kind of, uh, pushed back a lot of the college stuff for a while like it, it, it delayed you know my ability to be a college student pretty much until my junior year so pretty much between second semester freshman year and junior and, and all sophomore year right we're all just your pandemic stuff where it was virtual there wasn't a ton of interaction I was very fortunate to live with two of my good friends here at our house so I had a good nice support system there um had great you know, small group that I had managed to make as a great friend group my freshman year. Um, So it wasn't the people who had, I think the hardest probably were the people who came in as freshmen in 2020, where they, everyone's wearing masks. It was really not a ton happening socially. And you had to kind of come into IU and be really, you know, like held back in terms of your social interactions. Um, So I was lucky to get a, a good chunk before COVID hit. And then COVID hit and um, made me more appreciative of a lot of things that I have in life that you don't really think to be appreciative for. Um, just generally being around people and and socializing with them and and talking and seeing their entire face is something that you don't really see very often. What didn't see really really think is a big thing. Um, yeah. And then it, it it you know I a lot of people had a lot harder time with COVID. I'm, I'm a pretty introverted guy. I am fine being by myself. Fine being at my place. Like I wasn't. I was there was times I was like maybe it'd be cool to be going outside right now but like with, with COVID and lockdown I wasn't like too cooped up I was okay and there were people who definitely had much worse times at it than right. I did and um so I'm not gonna sit here and be like I went through this big arduous journey um it definitely did I think I came out of it more I don't know if I was more or less outgoing and and ambitious and ready to get out of my, out of my comfort zone afterwards I'd like to think I was a little bit more because I had about a year and a half where I was just kind of not able to um but i i overall i I think that it was um you learn a lot obviously from covid and i ended up starting to do some virtual stuff with the lc transfer room did stuff there um i still did a lot of broadcasting it was with masks and stuff and you had to kind of yeah i don't know i don't yeah i don't know how you did that because i was watching i think at the time i watched that it's like you guys like taped like a bunch of shows that you guys do. And it's like, Oh, they have masks on. I'm like, yeah, oh, this is weird. It's, um, you learn, you learn how to deal with one extra set of obstacles. Yeah. Um, and you know, you, it's almost like I maybe might another thing to be hard is be juggle and try and talk at the same time. And that yeah. would be hard to do as well. Yeah. Um, and, 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 but, but they made alternatives like this. And exactly. Uh, exactly. So yeah, this is uh this is great. That's what everyone did during COVID. They started podcasts. Exactly what they did. And it it honestly helps a lot to um I just, just the idea of Zoom, the idea of virtual interviews. And you don't have to be in person with somebody yeah. to do a story or to talk or to do a podcast or do an interview or anything. You can do it from across, you know, the country. I mean, you're you're Absolutely. in Michigan, I'm in Indiana. Like it's we're yeah. we're, we're states apart, but we're able to communicate as if we were right next to each other on the couch having a beer. So yeah. yeah. Problem is I don't drink. So oh, there we are. You're uh, drinking water. I'm drinking a beer. That's very true. Um, okay. So we talked about your college experience. What's next? So I um I'm very excited to start a position um down in South Florida, um, in Fort Lauderdale with uh, a company called Vista World Link. 
it's so we mentioned soccer i'm really interested in that they do a lot of production both live broadcasting and um, video storage and just general management of a lot of soccer leagues in america like they they do more soccer broadcasting than anybody else um in the country uh, more than apple more than fox they they will put a lot of stuff for them it's not like they're putting stuff to one outlet they'll put stuff on espn plus fox um paramount plus apple tv um, I think I already said ESPN Plus, but a lot of different outlets um, will use their services for that. So I, um, there's a guy who graduated in 2019, Josh Eastern. We have a lot of similarities in our in our IU trajectories. He founded the Hoosier Network. I'm currently the director of the Hoosier Network. He called Little Five three times. I called it twice. So I, we've had some interactions there, and he calls soccer for a living down with them. Um, and I was really interested in that. Ended up reaching out to him, trying to learn more about a position I had found. Um, a few things came together and I'm really excited to to start doing broadcasting and producing. It's a great entry level position for soccer broadcasting because it's not done a ton in America. I was honestly looking at like the day that I um, ended up getting in touch with um, his boss and got offered a position. I was also looking at a Sky Sports um, 12 month mentorship like internship program where it would be a foot in the door in, in soccer in 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 England um because I was like I don't know how realistic it is to get in I didn't I didn't know the, the pathway into broadcasting soccer in America um professionally I was like maybe I have to move to Barcelona or I have to move to Europe which was a um something I was very prepared and I was ready to take that massive risk but my parents are are n- not nervous but they're you know they they worry enough with me going to South Florida, if I was going across the country or across the, the world, they would be losing their mind if there's a six hour time difference. Um, so I, I'm excited to do that. I'll be broadcasting USL championship and USL league one games this first year. It's got an incredible trajectory to grow and to learn. There's some phenomenal people there that I've already been talking to that I'm going to learn from. Um, I'm going to get great reps, great chance to learn. And there's a lot of opportunity to grow from this. Um, it, it's, you know, I'm going to have to get down there and, and get my feet and get right running on my feet right away. Um, but it's going to be an incredible experience. And I'm, I'm, I'm not like, I'm avoiding thinking about it. Cause I don't want to lose sight of what I'm doing right now and just the last few moments. Um, but it's going to be a, a tremendous experience. And I'm honestly just very appreciative of the fact that they're willing to take a chance on me out of college. Um, and I'm like going to be your classic, just I'm 21 years old. I'm going to be going down there. Um, my girlfriends are going to IU for another year. So I'm just basically not going to make any friends. I'm just going to work and I'm I'm ready to just get after it and grind um, because this is something that I have been doing for fun. And now you're saying I can do this for a living and I can go out and experience a brand new part of the world that I've only been like, I've only been to Florida a couple of times to visit my grandparents when I lived there. Um, and now I'm going to live in this, like I'm going to be a, a Florida man. Like this is, not something I ever anticipated for myself. Um, but I, you never know what life's going to toss your way. And I think this is going to be something that is going to be a, a great learning experience, great developing experience. Um, and I just, I can't, I mean, it, I'm less than, I mean, I'm like three or four weeks away at this point for my start date when I start down there, which is crazy to think about that it's that soon, but I'm incredibly amped to get going. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm, it's been about two months since I um, was offered this position. And so I've had a lot of time to think about it. Um, and I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I've been kind of boiling up at the max of like excitement that it's going to kind of boil over in terms of just raw tenacity to get after it, which I'm very excited for. Sure. All right. Um, Jack, thank you so much for coming on and talking about, um, you know, your career and uh, best of luck down in Florida. And uh, we will definitely be having you on again sometime. Oh, yeah. And see how you're doing. Oh, indeed. I It's going to be a crazy first few months. Um, I, I'm i I'm very excited to update you on where it goes. So I, I have an idea in my head of what's going to happen, um, but it's just going to be, you know, you got, your, you got your plan. Everyone's got a plan when they enter the ring until you get punched in the jaw. So I'm very excited to get punched in the jaw and figure out how I react from that. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that is, but thank you again for Casey for having me on. It's always nice to, to catch up and also it's nice to talk about yourself 
because you have to kind of recontextualize what you do um, and just think about it a little bit more. So I always appreciate you bringing me on.